Good evening, everyone. It's, uh, Terry. Wendy. It's, uh, episode four, day five. Day of five of coronavirus. Self-quarantine slash work from home slash start a podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome to Danger Plus Survival Equals Fun. Welcome back. Uh, hope that you've enjoyed our other three episodes. <clears throat> I think it's important to watch these videos. Watch these videos. <laughs> With your ears, watch these videos. Uh, listen to these podcasts in order because I think the order is important. Yeah, we're, we're definitely changing from day to day. <laughs> Everything is crazy. Everything is crazy. Yeah, so we're going to do a couple things. I feel like it's good to set an agenda so that we're not just wandering aimlessly through this Sunday evening, but we're going to go over the news. All right. Oh, Tell yeah. you where we are. Sure. Or, you know, as we've heard it, as we understand it. I I did cursory research mm -hmm. to confirm these headlines. Cool. Okay. So, well, the first thing is something that you told me about the city of Hoboken. Oh yeah, uh, Hoboken, New Jersey, was the first city in the uh, in the country to institute a 10 p.m. curfew. Um, I think there's also been other cities uh, so far, but uh, I can't think of where they are. But definitely Hoboken. Definitely Hoboken. Hoboken's the first place I've heard of with a curfew. Yeah. Other places are banning mass gatherings, mm -hmm. as we mentioned. In the past few episodes, they've been like, you know, no, nothing over a thousand people, nothing over 500 people. Um, Austria just banned all gatherings of more than five people. Mm -hmm. uh, and Florida just banned, I think, was it 25 people? Uh, or more getting together? Or was that Massachusetts? One I don't know. We watched states. a there bunch a of, of governors yeah, a lot in of press a row conferences giving today. press conferences about what their state was going to do. To... Um, CDC recommends canceling gatherings of 50 people or more. Mm -hmm. And I think that over the next three to five days, you're just going to see more and more, uh, like that number getting smaller and smaller. Until yeah. we get to zero. Like, yeah. no mass gatherings staying in the house. <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty much going to be, like, immediate family only for a couple of weeks. So get ready to stay inside with your yeah. with your loved ones, your roommates. I'm so conflicted about this because, on the one hand, we have, like, th the idea of martial law being forced to stay inside, the National Guard patrolling your neighborhood mm -hmm. like this is the worst case scenario <laughs> kind of but it's kind of all about the tone that you take mm -hmm. and like it's it's really when your government is wielding this much power you want to feel confident that is coming from a place of good and a place of responsibility and societal obligation. And, mm -hmm. like, if that's what's going on right now, that we're all just trying to stay alive because this coronavirus does not care if you have a bunch of money or if you have an important job or whatever, like, <laughs> we can all get it and we can all suffer from it. And it is ground everything to a halt. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is the great equalizer. Yeah, it's um, it's pretty, it's it's interesting and terrifying to watch, um, but also, um, yeah, I am I'm hopeful that this is going to, uh, you know, I mean, it's going to be, you know, I still don't know what to what to believe yet. I mean, we're not going to know for for like another week how how bad it is. Well, but... well, that's exactly why I want to give you some more headlines right now. Okay, so so that we can gauge where we'll be in a couple. Everybody, days. stay cool though. the so... The name of this episode is "Don't Panic." That's right, and that's what we want to kind of keep reiterating to you guys is, um, some things are going to happen that may make you pretty uncomfortable and it may spark some conspiratorial thinking and mm. and I know there's a lot of people that are kind of edgy out there and you know they've been waiting for a moment like this cuz that you know it's uh, there's a large community of very paranoid people out there and you know I'm a big proponent of just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not after you so you know if if there are my friends listening 
I, I just want to reiterate, don't panic. Mm-hmm. Don't panic. If everyone keeps a level head, if everyone just chills the fuck out, right. and doesn't be an asshole, right. then I think this will be fine. I mean, not fine. Yeah. It's going to suck. Wicked bad. It already kind of sucks. Yeah. It already super sucks. Well, let me just give you a few more headlines. Okay. Okay. All with right. That, with that disclaimer, Don't here's panic. the thing. I think it's important to share this information to so that you have a flavor and so people listening later have a flavor. Maybe we just shouldn't release these contemporaneously with what's going on because it'll make people panic. No, I, don't I, know. I okay. think I think people need to also stay informed and, and well, it's talk good. Talk about it. Yeah, talk about it. You know, let's let's talk this out, you guys, because there's a lot of yeah, this is this is crazy. This we is... have and we have no incentive to whip you into a frenzy. Exactly. We're not trying to sell you anything. So we are just sort of holding a mirror up. Mm-hmm. To this headline Queen Elizabeth flees Buckingham Palace. Oh, no. She doesn't want to get coronavirus. God save the queen. Yeah, she's not a human Um, being. Okay, I'm going to... I'm going to say a couple really sad things, but then I'll say some other interesting things, and then we'll go to some positive things. So let's make this a puppy sandwich, all right? Okay. Guys, puppies. Aww. Aww. Um, 386 people died today in Italy. Okay. Puppies. Oh. Oh. That didn't work as well as I hoped. I know that that was um, okay. I guess that doesn't really, work. It's a really sad situation in Italy. They're totally overwhelmed. Their hospitals are completely overrun, and they have to make choices now about who goes on a ventilator and who doesn't. Mm-hmm. That is the darkest timeline. That's that's pretty scary, guys. That's it. But I found this little tidbit of preventative care um to be and uh, not fun fun is not the word ironic i guess unexpected for sure that isis is telling its jihadists to stay home <laughs> oh kids 20 years from now isis is the the world's number one terrorist organization yeah Everybody's favorite bad guy, ISIS. ISIS. Um, but even even they are willing to set aside terror um, to, to fight the virus for the common good. See, we can all come together Yeah. and hashtag stay the fuck home. Hey, all the bad guys out there, just yeah. stay the fuck home. Right. Bad guys. Was that a, a police Twitter or Facebook today asking people to not commit crimes or other nefarious yeah, activities yeah that was pretty funny um yeah but you know go back to your volcano layers with your evil laser beam shark pools mm. and just chill yeah for like a minute just pet your cat um i think that this is this is just terrible and this is just something that i feel like i have to share because again historical record like Nothing ab- nothing about this is being made better by Donald Trump being president. Mm-hmm. In fact, <laughs> almost uniformly, it's been made worse by Donald Trump being president. And <sighs> I think that the, the most America 2020 thing I've ever heard is this. German officials are reporting that the German firm CureVac which has been working furiously on a vaccine for the coronavirus to give to to the German government, Mm -hmm. that they were approached by U.S. administration officials who want to outbid the German government and purchase the coronavirus vaccine so that only Americans can have it. That is. So I read this capitalist. multiple places in reputable sources. That I is, made sure this was true. That is so late stage capitalism, you guys. That uh, that's just where we are. Okay. I mean, it's like wow. So let me it's just let bad me go guys. to the good news for a second. Bad guys being bad guys. China set up sixteen temporary hospitals in February. Wuhan 
China. It's mm-hmm. like the genesis of this outbreak. It's there's 11 million people in this city. It has been on lockdown for 50 days, five zero. Mm-hmm. Um, there were 50,000 reported cases of the virus, and about 2,500 people died. And today, the last of those temporary hospitals were closed, and the last group of 49 patients walked out the door. Wow. So that is really good news for us and the world in terms of how it, it is possible to contain this virus, mm-hmm. even in like small cities with, um, you know, with a lot of with densely populated areas. But they were able to do that because China is an authoritarian government and mm-hmm. uh, government's just like, do this and fuck, they have to do it. Yeah. So. But, you know, listen, it, I know it's like everybody's great fear, right? Like the, the government lockdown. Um, so, you know, I, like you, am, am pretty conflicted about it. But also, you know, my I, I always just go with my gut in these situations. And my gut says, like, like right now, I, I kind of feel like no matter what the truth is, really, we should just stay the fuck inside. Honestly, <laughs> like, get get where you're going and stay there. I'm saying. Act as if you and everyone around you has it. Mm-hmm. Because That's basically might. what's up. And that it, those are the actions that you have to take to contain a pandemic. And what I, what's been really striking to me all, all day, all week, I guess, is what an American problem we have right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, yeah, this is so America it's 2020. For, for, like, so many reasons, but... It's like the sequel to 2019. <laughs> <laughs> that you no thought 2019 was bad. Dot, dot, dot. Dun, 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 um, dun. True. I mean, really, every year since 2016 has been worse than the last one, and we keep saying, oh, my God, David Bowie died, like next year has to be better like prince is dead it, can, it just it has to be better next mm-hmm. year oh so but he, all right <laughs> all right so L- all right listen, let's like, let's listen folks listen listen don't panic don't panic i want to i want to talk about solidarity <laughs> i want to talk about the power of collective action but i want to talk about it after we take a quick break okay so I guess we'll, uh, we'll, uh, oh, sorry. We'll be back after a word from our sponsors. Okay, so um, we're back. We're back, and we're gonna stop talking about the news because uh, it's freaking a lot of people out. And uh, I know, um, and the kind of kind of the whole point of us doing this is to um, maybe help mitigate everybody's fears a little bit, calm calm your help you calm your hems about the whole situation. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't want to. You don't want to not be prepared for a worst case scenario, but you also don't want to freak out like a crazy person. So, you know, I think we definitely all feel in this one together, guys. Am I right? Am I right? Well, I feel like we've got two audiences that we're speaking to right now. We have the people who are who are living in this moment with us and listening contemporaneously. Mm -hmm. But we also, I don't want to not talk about the news. Yeah, of course. Because I'm also aiming for 10 years from now when you and I are listening back, being like, oh, do you remember back in the day when we lived through the coronavirus? So. Yeah, because these times are so crazy, we wanted to document it. But we also want to help you feel better and not feel so alone. And... Uh, We want to remind everyone out there to not lose their humanity and don't panic and Mm. be kind to your neighbors. You know what I mean? Yeah. This time is going to be very tough. 
and way tougher for some than others. Well, I think that's true. But, you know, I, I feel like we've done a decent job of acknowledging our privilege, and I'm sure that we have to continue to do that with each podcast in mm-hmm. case someone doesn't go back to the first one and be like, gee, they're so woke. Yeah, but... we're, we're white. <laughs> we're white. But Sorry. That's not <laughs> the point that I was trying to make. Um, I sometimes feel guilty about how other how badly other people are doing right now yes. like it feels weird to be somewhat financially stable when i walk like through midtown manhattan by a number of homeless people begging mm-hmm. for money every day like it is it's a weird thing that you experience as a new yorker to like have to kind of numb yourself a little bit to all the horrifying things that are out there so that you can continue to exist like through without, your day. without completely freaking out. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe this is coming from a like a New Yorker perspective a little bit. Maybe I'm I'm, I'm maybe I'll be a little flip or a little reverent or, you know, yeah. Assume that people know things or understand things about how large groups of people work. Yeah, but perhaps. But also, <clears throat> it doesn't matter where you go. There's elements of your community that have been kind of made invisible by our nonstop, always on the edge American mm-hmm. way of life. Because everyone's always on the edge. You know, you can really only worry about your your immediate group of family and friends you know you Mm. gotta worry about your team your tribe right and then uh and then there are other uh tribes that you're like oh man i hope they did good and and you'd probably reach out and and help them if they were in need but like there's there's massive parts of your community that you don't even know exist yeah you you know what i mean and um those folks that are uh sort of most in need at this very second um now have even less so with all that being said yeah with all that being said (laughs) just a lot we just said a lot yeah all of that tell us about your day because your day in like we're doing fine right now yeah you if you didn't tell us that there was a deadly contagious virus going on outside and just let us go about our day we would have had a very pleasant day yeah it was it was all right uh I uh, I did like I called my mom first thing this morning to tell her not to go to church and when she picked up the phone she was like I can't talk right now I'm in church I was like ah um and yeah sorry sorry mom I did I did freak out a, a little bit yeah um, you did <clears throat> but but only because um you know the time to take this seriously was you know before we even started podcasting about it but I do think that we got a preview like we've had a long time to think about this because Mm -hmm. we have to think about these things when we live in a big city yeah and a lot of my friends and family in central new york verona is a town of like 1500 people Mm -hmm. so that's not they're not seeing that on a day-to-day basis so i think it's okay to give people a little lead time but that time is up (laughs) like Mm -hmm. everyone needs to know now um, what else happened after you chastised uh, your parents? <laughs> we just had a conversation, but I also called my brother and sister just mm-hmm. to make sure that they were, uh, all set for what was, you know, about to happen. My sister told me this crazy story. Oh my gosh. So my sister lives on an island off the coast of Maine and, uh, it's like quite a substantial ferry ride into the ocean to get there, you know, and it's a very small community. And uh, she said that uh, it was either today or, or yesterday, this group of folks just came and slowly and quietly raided their grocery store on the island of all their toilet paper and got on the ferry um, and took it all back to the mainland. That's like fucked up, yo. That's yeah. fucked up. Yo, yeah. those people are fucked. If 
for some uh, for some re- miraculous reason any of those people are listening to this podcast fuck you yeah. dude like big time what is your problem bub wow the amount of wow. effort that that it takes to get to that island because yeah, I've I been can't... to that island like the amount of money and time that you have to shell out just to be a dick yeah is is shocking to me and and part of me is like yo are those people like freaking out that much or are they like trying to be evil cuz it's like one or the other those are the only two i think logical explanations what is sustained panic you would have to be in to, like, to not let the ocean breeze in your face, like, slow on that relatively slow ferry out into the ocean. Like, that, if that doesn't wake you up out of your panic. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like, that's, that's dark, yo. Yeah. So, you know, we're trying to stress to people, just chill out. That's what our landlord was saying when he came over. Yes, our landlord Great had guy. to had Perfect to come guy. over and fix our uh, furnace. Shout out to shout out to our landlord. <laughs> we'll hear that often. <laughs> yeah, no, they're great. They seriously are great people. Um, celebrate something. Woo, there's good news. I need <laughs> our furnace works again. Our, yeah. Hey, there you go. Oh yeah, our pipes froze. Our pipes froze. I don't because they're in the ground. I don't know. It's a Shit. strange place to keep a pipe. But uh, we mostly kind of paced around today. We mm-hmm. did a lot of pacing. A lot of pacing, a lot of calling, a lot of making sure everybody's okay. Yeah. We just want all our friends and family to be okay. You I was know? doing work. More more crises. Mm-hmm. More communication that needed to happen. Um, I went for a run trying to practice what i preach mm-hmm. ran for a mile we, well, i walk jogged for a mile we set up the picnic table in the back we did for all the picnics i read a chapter of a fantasy novel uh, in the yard I, in the sunshine yeah um yeah i mean so far so good we we right. made it through the weekend you guys we survived a weekend without leaving the we house we haven't eaten all the snacks yeah we still have some snacks left um bunch of leftovers Speaking of left over, I want to go over to the left for a minute. Oh, that was a terrible segue. I'm sorry. Yeah. I. Yeah. I need to. <laughs> I need to get up on my box of soap, and on the on the in the positive direction note, this is a pretty easy one for me to argue that everything is going to be okay. Okay. Because we know the answer. All right. What's the answer? The answer is collective action. Ah, collective action. Why didn't I think of that? Collective action is something that I think of every single day because I work for a labor union. And it has consistently been, in my opinion, the thing that we have needed to Mm-mm. save ourselves. Mm-hmm. Indeed, it is the only thing that will ever save us. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, brothers and sisters. <laughs> Folks that are in my family because I'm not being, you know, gendered about it. Um, the, the basic concept is that we can do incredible things together and that the whole will be greater than the sum of its parts. And right now, it's we're being presented with more and more peril. <laughs> every day, every year, we are presented with an opportunity to solve a problem by acting collectively. Mm-hmm. And New Yorkers did it really well after 9-11. Yep, that's truth. That they, there was a tragedy that was completely outside of our control, and we were, I mean, the citizens of New York were horribly, horribly affected by this. People had to stay home, businesses were lost, lives were lost, kids couldn't go to school. Like, it, it this feels a lot like that mm-hmm. in terms of the emergency level that we are at. And there was a an amount of kindness and 
openness and generosity that that I had not that I felt like didn't match with New York's reputation. Like yeah. It was impressive. Yeah, the first first couple of years after 9/11, it was uh everyone really kind of came together and and sort of walk, walked each other out of it, you know. It was uh it uh and and it's what we need right now, but on a national scale. But the well, kind of like after Pearl Harbor, you mm-hmm. know, but the problem is that that collective power requires a strong leader Mm -hmm. and because we haven't had a lot of great visionary leaders um or when we have we've had people trying to undermine them at every step we we've had that all that collective anger all that collective will is there and it's ready to be wielded by somebody Mm -hmm. and the person unfortunately wielding that power right now has a racist sexist xenophobic agenda Mm -hmm. and so that's why everything has gone completely haywire because the collective will is there that 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 urge for collective action is there we just don't know where to aim it mm-hmm. because there we're, hasn't been. We're so used to spending it on war and vitriol yes. against against our enemies That's or very our perceived true. enemies that, you know, if we instead unleash that power inwardly to sort of fix our country's problems together, um, then we could certainly come through this better on the other side. Well, it's bigger than that now. I mm-hmm. mean, I agree with that, but. You know, the we were also given an opportunity by Al Gore and then again several years later um, to to take global like countrywide action, but global action on climate change, Mm -hmm. which is an existential threat and not even an existential threat got us to come together and get off our butts because it kind of feels like it's in the future a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't have to worry about that right now. Yeah. You know, hard it's, to say that when you're standing in the middle of a brush fire in Australia. Yeah, it's it's like hierarchy of needs type stuff. Yeah. So now here we are. We have no more lives left. Like, we're out of health points and we have an immediate deadly virus Mm -hmm. here in our country. Like, we keep getting the collective action thing wrong. And finally, the only thing that we need to do right now as Americans and as citizens of the world, the, the thing that is being asked of us, most of us, apart from first responders and healthcare workers and truckers, is stay home. Stay home. Sit on your butt. Please don't don't do a thing. I mean, do things, but, but just do them in your house. But just stay home or at your yard. Stay home or that park is by yourself. The thing that you are being asked to do, and the consequences of not doing the thing of sitting on your butt in your house is that a whole bunch of people die. Yeah. So your grandparents, <laughs> your the nice librarian, the lady that you talk to at the bank, like all. Everybody over 70. Like, just picture that for a minute. People, yeah. I've, this is terrible. People have referred to it as the boomer remover. Oh, no, it's no, no. It's horrible. I hate that. Come on, y'all. Let's love each other right now. <laughs> it's so. We gotta, like, we gotta stop all the yikes. fight and work together, y'all, because this is like, this is kind of big. Um, I mean, it is big. It is actually big, not just kind of. My whole my whole point is this, and I'm trying to make it a hopeful one, is that we have the power in our hands right now to stop this virus, to stop its spread. We just have to obey orders from our government and pray to God that our leaders know what the hell they're doing. Mm. And we f- generally feel we have been operating without a government. Mm -hmm. In America, we like truly for all intents and purposes, we have done everything that we can to just circumvent the government because it's so dysfunctional and so horrible to work with right now. Yeah. So 
all of a sudden we really, really need our government to work. Mm -hmm. And it's not working. Mm -hmm. And there's, among all this other stuff that's going on, there's a presidential debate tonight, of course. Yeah, which was... Joe Biden versus Bernie Sanders. We stopped watching it after an hour and a half because (sighs) it's a lot, but... There was this moment where Joe Biden said, people want results, not a revolution. And, like, we have to fix these problems right now. We don't have time for a revolution. Yeah, a revolution came to you, homie. There has never been a better time, an easier time for a revolution than right now. 